Oh man, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode nine of the Boiler Express podcast. We've got uh, myself, Damon, or the Ultimate Boiler. We've got uh, Chris Five O Ghost next to me, um, Frank the Stat Tank uh, right below me, and then we've got Big Ten Russ uh, below Chris. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, guys. Uh, you know, I was pretty. I didn't. I I muted our our group chat for like eight hours, I think, on <laughs> Saturday because man, I was torn up about that game uh so uh but yeah uh we're gonna talk wisconsin we're gonna talk a little bit about basketball with us having a bye week right now we're, we're gonna wait till next week to focus on iowa um so we're gonna talk a little bit about basketball what we expect what we think will happen um and then we're gonna do a fun little thing at the end where we're gonna have a um a draft of mm -hmm. our um you know our starting five of purdue basketball players from i believe is 1990 on um, so that'll be yeah, really great. Fun. If it's, it's not be... like my fantasy football team, I'm screwed. <clears throat> right. <laughs> it's going to be all randomized. We're going to do, a, I have a randomizer wheel over here with all of our names on it. So it's going to be completely random and uh, it'll be a lot of fun though. Um, but we had two guys go to the game, uh, Chris and Frank, you were both there. So why don't you guys kick it off with just everything uh, going from atmosphere to the game to all your thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, so uh, first off, uh, I want to, uh, start by addressing just kind of the fans as a whole. Um, I'd heard some things from several people about Wisconsin and their fans not being particularly great. Um, what we saw, at least in my opinion, was the exact opposite. They were really incredibly good. welcoming. Uh, they were extremely nice. There were lots of, you know, fist bumps like, hey, let's have a good game today. Um, we found a spot to tailgate. Uh, everyone around us was extremely welcoming and uh, offered us food and, and drinks and we're, you know, we're extremely open to conversation and, yeah. uh, you know, we didn't see that at all. Um, as a whole, the fan base, it definitely seems like they know how to get, have a good time. Um, yeah. there was uh, no shortage of partying going on, uh, in and around the stadium. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, uh, ev everyone, uh, was, was great. Fantastic. Uh, with the exception of the, uh, person behind us who just didn't know how to insult Purdue. Um, right. Right. But, uh, you know, as far as the atmosphere at the game, uh, I really wanted to get a feel for how it compared to Ross Aid. Um, I would say it's about on par uh, in terms of the atmosphere. Granted, we were at the opposite end of the stadium uh, from the students. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as the noise and the intimidation factor, it was about what you'd see uh, from a night game at Ross, sold out night game at Ross Aid. One thing that did impress me about the students is that they um, they did have some synchronized chants at certain points mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, it reminded me a were. lot of like the paint crew. Yeah, yeah, sim yeah, similar to what you'd see from the paint crew. Um, I wasn't able to tell what they were saying. Again, we were too far away, um, but that that part was pretty cool. And one of the things I was most excited about was to finally see jump around. Uh, and it's something that they take a lot of pride in. I mean, Chris, we probably saw. 50 shirts that just said jump around it was oh, just yeah. like, like, just like that was around. like yeah. an identity for that yeah family. yeah for sure and it's something that i knew they took a lot of pride in um didn't necessarily know the extent to which they took pride in it and uh you know the the kid behind us was letting us know that he was a student at wisconsin and how he'd never experienced it outside of the student section and just couldn't wait to see it and people in the parking lot were saying oh you can feel the stadium shake it's the greatest thing you've ever seen when it came, I was I, I was pretty disappointed. Um, oh, really? It was, yeah. It, yeah. I, I, was, it was, I mean, I was sitting there. I was waiting to feel the stadium shake. Didn't feel the stadium shake. Um, and, and maybe it's because we were surrounded by Purdue fans and we weren't in it, yeah. um, so to speak. Maybe. But I just remember thinking, wow, that was... That was kind of a letdown. And, and I, I was hyped. I was just as hyped as anyone did to, to oh, see yeah. it. Like, I was uh, ready to see it. Like, yeah. Like, it was just like... I don't know, you know, the expectations you have for like a whiteout game at Penn State or yeah. dotting the I at Ohio State or something like that. And I was like. Well, you know, did the student section end up filling up? Because I know you guys sent a picture like a kickoff and it was, you know, not by, even by the full. time they did it, it was probably what I'd say probably 10 rows from the top weren't full. And that was. About yeah. It. yeah, I would okay. say it was about 85 percent full yeah. uh, at, at its peak, but. One interesting thing is that, you know, when the jump around happened, they just emptied completely. Oh, yeah. So that's like yeah. the thing that they're all After waiting the for. Fans. He's um, interesting. So, so uh, Chris mentioned some of the other school experiences. Does this give you second thoughts about trying to go to Virginia Tech next year? No. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm no, so pumped yeah. for that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. No, I but, think uh, uh, I think each school, like, kind of has their own uh, – 
I don't know how to say a trophy to hold when it comes to their big things, you know, Clemson Mm -hmm. with their entrance, Virginia tech, uh, Penn state, stuff like that. They all kind of have their own, uh, their, um, own thing to prove for lack of, and I won't have an opinion on it until I see it in person. Yeah. Can you imagine if, uh, Purdue, you know, everybody in West Lafayette was wearing like black and gold shirts that said shout on it. Yeah. (laughs) That's not something that I feel like we're necessarily, uh, proud of, but it's something that we endure, I think as fans. Um, but a a lot of fans would think we're big fans of laundry, laundry detergent, like old school. Yeah. (laughs) The, uh, honestly, I think we're more proud of the block P than we are shout. Uh, I, I agree. But the, the comparison between Camp Randall and ross Aid, um, it's clearly a nicer stadium. Um, I feel like it's what ross Aid can and probably will be in the future. I mm-hmm. um, was really impressed with their okay. kind of uh, end zone opposite the student section. Um, they had like tables set up where people who obviously paid a lot of money can you know yeah. sit and enjoy drinks. It, and kind It of reminded of- me of like their John Purdue club section. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but a re- really nice stadium. Um, you know, there's uh, the the press box is really nice. They had the the Rose Bowl championships and things like that. You know, um, that's cool. Paste it up so you could see it. And uh, uh, so, as far as the facility itself, it was it, it was pretty nice. Um, so was yeah, I was actually I was actually pretty surprised. Like they've got like a bunch of, and I'm kind of a history buff anyway. So they had like a bunch of like 1934 Wisconsin football oh, cool. team pictures and stuff like that and then they've got like a big wall of everybody and i know it's like this in Mollenkopf, but there's a wall of like all the guys who have been drafted from purdue and i mm-hmm. think taking that and bringing it out into the concourse of ross aid kind of like uh they do at camp randall i think would be awesome i think it'd be cool to to share that with the alumni and the fans and the university and stuff like that um, well like- uh one one thing I will say as well, um, you know, before we get too too deep into the, the comparison, um, the intro video was was lame too. Didn't hold oh, a candle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that's that that that's how you're trying to hype up the crowd. Yeah, it was it was kind of it was very. Uh, but it, it was cool. The players come down a tunnel with different color lights flashing and stuff. But the the video to get everyone hyped up before it was like yeah. it I'll left take, a lot on the I'll table. Take us. And I will say this about shout, and I think I told this to Frank. I think that if you're a student or alumni probably shout is more interesting but i think maybe on the outside looking in it's not as interesting yeah agreed agreed um so just out of curiosity for for you know the two who watched it on tv how did it sound um like i've gone back and watched film and stuff but did it did it sound like a intimidating atmosphere on tv so let's uh, address the monkey in the room from you know watching the game from home. Uh, ESPN sucks. Yo, oh, I heard about that. <laughs> um, I heard about it. It was like halfway through the first quarter before the game started, wasn't it? Uh, it was fourteen nothing already by the time we got the game. Well, on. that was oh, four minutes so in, it, so that really yeah, did. <laughs> yeah, it's um, so it's uh, yeah, it uh, was kind of to our benefit that we didn't have to see, you know, the early early mistakes, but mm-hmm. we did see the third touchdown. But it was just very beyond frustrating. I know it's something that's been talked about by all fan bases, how games are scheduled and on certain networks and how there's no room for even a standard game. You know, it was the Cincy game, I think, right? The yeah, Cincy and SMU, and I could yeah. care less. Yeah, it didn't even go to overtime. It's not like it extended into two, three overtimes, and that's why it flowed over into our game. Yeah, And on top of that, it's like there was no plan because they kept saying on the bottom of the screen, it's streaming live on the ESPN app. It was not. Nope. False. <laughs> there was multiple people on Twitter posting pictures and screenshots of their ESPN app saying, there's nowhere you can find the game. There's nowhere. And so Damon and I, I remember, you know, we talked about muting the thread because it's like, what? It's seven nothing? What? It's 14 nothing? What? What's going on? We can't even see the game. Yeah. So, yeah, that was frustrating. Well, luckily, but... we dumped that problem here in another year or so. Well, it's... yeah. So, kind of kind of catch you all up uh, on what happened in the first four minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, Wisconsin got the ball to start. Um, they drove down a the field. The, they drove down the field. I think we got them into a third and six. Um, you know, had, had pressure on the QB, uh, had a missed tackle, which, spoiler alert, that's a problem that plagued us throughout the entire game. Uh, ran for a first down and then threw a deep bomb for a touchdown. Um uh, then I think it was AOC's second play from scrimmage on the 25 through a pick six. Yeah. And I mean, hit the, 
hit the safety Torchio right in the chest. Uh, and I mean, it wasn't even, I, I'm not sure who he was throwing to, um, to be honest. I think it was you. a, I think it was a dump pass to pain. Yeah. And that, there's that, that safety came right across and just stepped in front of it. That was yeah, probably he, the worst game I've that seen. That's the worst game I've seen Aiden play in a while. Statistically, it was only his, his second worst game this season after Penn state. I know um, he, yeah. I know he racked up the yards, um, last week against Nebraska and everything, but I still don't feel like he's totally hundred percent back from his injury or just, you know, I don't know if it's physically, um, but if it's not physically, I feel like there's definitely something mentally going on because ever since he got that injury, um, definitely just not the same like Nebraska, that first drive, we were marching down the field and he just throws it into double coverage and just Nebraska easily picks it off. And then I will, I will go on and I watched a little bit of the Nebraska game. And I think that was, either a blown route or they disguise the coverage really well because that was so unusual of a throw for him. I think that something was busted there because that was like so out of the ordinary. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. And then, uh, like you guys said, uh, you know, he didn't have a great game last week either. So I don't know. But um, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I checked my phone, saw it was, you know, 14, seven, nothing. And then I feel like as soon as I refreshed Twitter, um, Carmen was like, Oh, uh, pick six, 14, nothing now. And I was like, I was like, what is happening? And it really right. sucked. Uh, and I'm going to be totally honest with you. I didn't watch any of rest, any of the game after the first quarter, because I was, uh, so we went to, uh, back home to visit family and stuff. And I, so I've, I've talked about it, I think on here before, or maybe on Twitter that, uh, my grandpa's who got me into Purdue athletics. He's had season tickets since 85, had them to 2008. Um, then he stopped um, getting them just, you know, getting older, health complications, stuff like that. And so I always try to go home and watch one game with him every year um, just because that's something that he still loves to do. Um, and, that you know, it's just a passion of ours. And I remember when I when I got there, we were talking about, you know, the, the Big Ten championship and how, you know, he's not been to a game and almost 15 years, but he would love to go to the, you know, to Indy if they make it, um, you know, cause it's, it's indoor it's, you know, uh, we could get, you know, control. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. A better environment, you know, wouldn't be so cold in there. Yeah. Um, and man, I was just, I think I got so caught up in the emotion of that. Cause I was like, man, that would be amazing. Cause I hadn't been with, I, I've not been to a game with my grandpa in almost 15 years. And, um, I got really caught up in that and, um, Man, it was so hard watching that game because it's uh, and I know that and I know that Purdue still has a chance to win the West. We have to win out, um, you know, pending nobody else loses another game or whatever. But um, for me, I got so caught up in that that I just couldn't even watch the game because I was like and I know it sounds silly to get like get like this when it comes to a football game, because at the end of the day, it's just a sport. Um, but I think I was carrying a lot more emotional. I was a lot more emotionally invested in this game than I normally am. Uh, there was, it was just a lot uh, deeper emotions. And so to be honest, I didn't watch after that first quarter. Cause I was just so frustrated and like angry. Um, and I know the guys are angry. I know that they're upset with how the game went. They're always going to be more upset than we were, but yeah, to be totally honest, I didn't watch the game after the first quarter. I just checked my phone every now and then and just tried to, focus on spending time with my family that day. Cause I was like, man, if I just keep watching this game, I'm just going to get more mad <laughs> and more and mad. Be, and and, and then, the thing that kind of, kind of settled my soul. And I kind of said it in our group chat, a lot of people thought we went two and two or one and three in that month. And yeah. the fact we went three and one and honestly lost a game that has really no meaning in the big 10 West. Right. In terms of like, so we're a full game back, I think, of Illinois, and we play them, plus they play Michigan. Right. So honestly, like, it sucks. I'm I'm more mad because I'm tired of this damn badger riding my back right. than I am anything of this season alone. So yeah. I definitely think, uh, um, like, it sucks, but goals are still available. It's like I said against Penn State or against Syracuse. Everything's still attainable. We can still get everything yeah, we want. That that's yeah. that's very true. And I think I think we're gonna see a different team um, you know, coming out of this bye week, A, because you know, Brom said in the press conference that they're just gonna sit and kind of let this burn for a couple of weeks. So you had that aspect. 
Um, and then another aspect uh, that I took away from being at the game is that we are banged <laughs> up. Like we, as a team, so bad. we are in, we, we, I mean, the, the injury tent was up more than it's down. And uh, I think I've got everybody listed <laughs> here, but Charlie Jones is in and out of the injury tent. Corey Trice, no, uh, I think he only played one series. Um, yeah, I think it was that first series. I think he had a concu- uh, something concussion like. Not, not, but I mean, he he came out at halftime. Didn't even have his helmet with him. Yeah. Um, Jamari Brown got hurt after um, playing questionably the entire game. Um, you know, so we had a, a someone who's listed on the roster as a receiver, Childers, in playing at cornerback. Um, Payne Durham in and out of the the, the tent. Um, I think everyone saw Kydron Jenkins went down. Um, he, he did come back in the game, but he was not 100%. And then Jack Sullivan, yeah, he was injured, uh, I think, on a kickoff return or a punt return. Um, he, uh, you know, when they're, we're, we're rotating four linemen, uh, four defensive linemen at a time, and he was always the last one off the field after that. And you could just tell he was he was struggling to run in, on, on and off the field. Um, so I really think this buy is going to help us. Um, was surprised to see Brock Thompson didn't play after his kind of cryptic tweet, but ideally yeah. we get him back. I know Brahm has said that um, we're going to have a fully healthy Dylan Downing uh, at that point. Hopefully, have a fully oh, healthy King Daru. Um, ideally, we have Chris Jefferson back. So the second re- week in a row, our secondary was just exposed um, and just just kind of lost. Um, and the second week in a row that Jefferson wasn't there, so I don't know if he's the quarterback in that secondary right now. Which is interesting because I remember a couple of weeks ago, um, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was mentioning statistically or just that like, uh, you know, Jefferson really wasn't as maybe good out there in the secondary as we had thought he was. But I, I think his absence has really shown the effect that he does have in that secondary. But some guys are great coaches, but bad players. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and that's oh, I where I think I, I, I'm starting to think that that might be it. He might be really good at getting guys in their positions, mm-hmm. but maybe he's just just not good in coverage, or maybe you know I don't know what it is, but yeah, I, I I've definitely seen a shift since he's not been on the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you yeah. can put together Nebraska and put together Wisconsin, but um, you know it was it was not Jamari Brown's best day, uh, nor was it Cam Allen's best day, um, and it just seemed like. I mean, so they combined, they allowed eight receptions, and it seemed like every reception to those guys, they were a good three yards yeah. from their defender minimum. Um, and that was kind of the story of the entire yeah, the game. Spacing, yeah, the spacing was weird. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, like, like, like we talked about AOC, uh, Aiden O'Connell, wasn't, wasn't his greatest day. Um, his passer rating for the game is 64.1, uh, which isn't his worst of the season. Minnesota was actually his worst. Um, the, the confusing thing was that, you know, all, only one of his three interceptions on the day were under pressure. Um, I mean, he threw him right to, um, the, the, the defender hit him right in the chest. Um, yeah, they were bad. There, there were a lot of plays being there where I felt like he was trying to make a harder throw than he needed to. Um, and Chris, there was one in particular, where I know you and I both talked about where he had Sawinski wide open for wide open. what probably like, that's would have been a, a yard. Yeah, may, it may have been a touchdown. I don't know how fast he is. We just don't have enough right. sample size on him. But he completed a pass to Payne Durham, but a very difficult pass right across the middle, like in between defenders' hands when he had Sawin. I mean, it was, it was a blown coverage. Um, and I understand guys are going to miss you know miss things from time to time, but the, the rate at which it seemed to happen, maybe it was just because I was there – seem to be higher than than what I'd seen from him, you know, especially in the past. Yeah. But some uh, some positives, we ran the ball really well. Um both Kobe Lewis and Mockaby, we didn't didn't get as much from Kobe Lewis in terms of uh, third carries. State, third straight 100-yard game for Mockaby, right? Yeah, Mock Train, man, he just he just continues I, I like Mock Train. That's what I'm going to call him from now on since he said that's one of his nicknames, but um, yeah, he was averaging 3.6 yards after contact in this game, uh, over 100 yards. Uh, his breakaway just continues to be good, 27% breakaway percentage uh, against Wisconsin. Kobe Lewis averaged almost five yards after contact. He didn't get nearly as many carries, but uh, the ones he did get were pretty significant. So that's <laughs> definitely uh, something we can we can take away. Um, you know, at, at, For the most part, our offensive line played well. Um, 
defensive line, not so much, but, you know, again, they were pretty, pretty banged up. And I think another big thing that sticks out in this game was tackling. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we had nine total missed tackles as a team. Mm -hmm. Um, I think going back and watching the film, three of those led to first downs um, and one directly led to a touchdown. And it's just those little things, you know, that can be the difference between, you know, 7-0 or, I mean, it would have been, I think Branson Dean had had a missed tackle, which allowed them to score their first touchdown. Um, yeah. And, you know, 7-0 is a lot better than 14-0, assuming that pick six still happens. And we had we had a couple of passes hit us in the hands that we weren't able to, to draw in from a defensive standpoint. But um, I will say I this. I think that I've, I've never seen a team need a bye week more. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, this team looks beat to crap. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it, was, it was very, very apparent. Um, yeah. Just, they were slow. Like, they were sluggish. And that's what I'll say is down, that, up, down, up the whole game. Is I mean, that after, after Saturday, after my emotions like evened out, um, you know, Monday, yesterday, I think probably I was like, okay, this team went three and one. They were really crawling to that finish line to get to the end of October because of like how banged up they were. And when you put all that together and you mix, I mean, and honestly, probably just the pressure of what could be at the end of the season, um, maybe is weighing on on this team as well. Um, you don't think so at all? You don't think that the I, I idea of it. going to the Big Ten championship and I, potentially I playing in the Rose Bowl? I think, I think honestly, just being so tired and banged up is overshadowing. I think this is this seems like a very much or seems very much like a team that is a one and O team week by week at a time. I don't think they get too high or too low. They just go after it. But I think I, so I'll put it like this. I think that eventually when you, when you're so beat up, they just, they just are looking for any out that they can just to get to the end of the game, especially when you've got a possibility of having two weeks off and can kind of relax a little bit. And I mean, relax, like loosely, you know what I mean? The last note that I'll add is you guys talk about being banged up, but looking back, I'm very proud of the team because if you take away the 21, nothing start, we outplayed them the rest of the way. A thousand. I I know they played differently with the lead. Of course, I'm not saying that, We were the better team by any means. We weren't. They they outplayed us. They made the big plays yep. and and got it done. But not very often do you see a team get beat 35-24 after being down 21 nothing, but they yep. still lead in first downs, <laughs> still lead in third down efficiency, still lead in total yards and passing yeah, that's yards. So frustrating you know, too. We also know. committed half the amount of penalties. So we were more disciplined, yeah. really, other than yeah. the mistakes. We did lose the yeah. turnover battle three to one. If you don't but, spot them 14 nothing, we win that game. Yeah, agreed. Fourteen agreed. nothing so, and lose by eleven is is frustrating. If, if our bad day, loss for the year is a 35-24 loss after we were down twenty one nothing, I'm yep. I'm happy at the end of the year. And that's a really optimistic viewpoint and one that I one that I can definitely appreciate uh, yeah. and get behind. Yeah, I mean, and uh, uh, as we uh, we we saw, we we really figured things out on defense in the second half. Um, you know, they they weren't moving the ball nearly as well with uh, Braylon Allen. Um, I, I would love to know, and then perhaps I'll figure it out, but, uh, what, what his stats look like if you take away his big runs? Um, he kind of had some, some big runs and that the majority of his yardage came on those. Um, we did, I feel like as a whole, we did a good job of, uh, containing that guy, but, uh, a lot of good things to look forward to with Iowa. I think we're going to be healthy and fresh and we're going to have a chip on our shoulder. And, you know, we said this leaving the game. Uh, definitely don't want to be Iowa. I would hate to be now. Iowa this week yeah. or in two uh, weeks next week. Yeah. So, um, hey. so given that we don't have a game coming up this week, we thought we'd kind of take this opportunity to talk about uh, basketball for the first time this season. Um, playing basketball. basketball. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with that song. Yeah. What? Oh, oh my goodness. No way. You're yeah, just trying to get us to sing the whole stats. thing. That's too many stats. No, no, no. Seriously, you'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to send me a link to that one. Um, so I think, I think a good <laughs> place like to start is, I think, I think a good place to start is to look at, you know, what what we've lost from last year. Obviously, we lost some experienced point guards. Um, Isaiah Thompson. I don't think his transfer was a huge shock, but it sounded like it was a shock to the people close to the program. Um, we lost Eric Hunter Jr. Um, that was shocking. That that was yeah, a bigger shock to me. Left field. 
in fact, my our first episode of this podcast, I, I alluded to the fact that I, I thought he was going to return. Uh, so I got I got my face for that one. And it, it was just kind of a slap in the face to go to Butler. But I understand he's got to do what's best for him. It's close to home. So, uh, you know, wish him nothing but the best. We lost Trevion, who is definitely a one-of-a-kind player. Um, his passing ability is, is unparalleled for someone with his size and his skill level. Uh, and then uh, Sasha as well, uh, who's a guy whose you know, three-point shooting ability is going to be going to be missed. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so uh, you know we, we've we've seen a little a um, little bit of this team in uh, in the scrimmage this past weekend, and you know I've definitely been listening to uh, some uh, some interviews with, with with Painter, and one of his big areas of uh, concern for this team is that our margin for error uh, is going to be pretty small. Um, you know, he alluded to previous teams. I think he you know, specifically mentioned last year's team, but they could make a mistake. They could, you know, screw up here and there, but they had the talent, they had the athleticism to kind of overcome that. And that may not be the case this year. Um, so that's a little concerning. Um, but it's something that, you know, I think if we, if he knows that and the team knows that, hopefully we can play, um, knowing that uh, in mind. Um, I do expect a jump forward in defense this year. Uh, I know we've got a lot of guys that he's praised defensively already, particularly Trey Kaufman Wren and I'm, Braden. I, he Smith. might be my most favorite player to see. Yeah, yeah. We we honestly just haven't seen him uh, yeah. yet, and we don't really know what he's capable well, I've of. I've just but... heard him get gassed up for like two years. So yeah, that's far well, he's just really excited. <laughs> And I know he spent a lot of last season, his entire redshirt season, primarily working on defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, when we, we kind of saw that with Caleb first uh, this past season and that his defense wasn't just – wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite ready. Um, oh, offensively, no. offensively, he was sound, but he, uh, he, he wasn't there. I think I plugged something. Really. Keep going. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, the big thing about TKR that I think I'd mention to you guys that you got to keep in mind – Going into last year, he was ahead of first as far as just the impact we thought he was going to make. He got invited to the same Team USA camp that Ivy and first were on. And b- until he got injured, it looked like he was going to be playing ahead of and first might be the one redshirting. So yeah. without that injury, we were expecting just as big, if not bigger things from TKR as we were from Caleb first. So I remember I ran into TKR at um, Insomnia Cookies after a football game. Uh, last year oh my god he is big he's so tall he's huge Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's easy to overlook how tall these guys are when we have so many seven footers as we do is that that Mm -hmm. pun intended easy to overlook how tall they are (laughs) when i think uh you know speaking of seven footers we have the newcomer uh william berg and word on the street is he's uh he has a little bit of developing to do um he actually didn't play in the scrimmage this past weekend, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know if he's, hmm. you know, just sitting out for to nurse a minor injury or something like that. But he he actually didn't log any playing time. But um, yeah, kind of kind of the the buzz is that he's gonna he's gonna take a year to redshirt, which which is interesting because I I think outside of this sort of freak scenario with Matt Harms, this will be the first time we've redshirted a uh, seven footer. Um, so that must speak to the confidence that he has in first, um, who in an interview said he anticipates playing a lot of five this year. He also said he's put on 15 pounds of muscle in the, uh, the off season, which is pretty impressive too. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask a question? I'm a little nervous about first playing five. I don't know why, but he just seems smaller. It's not a question. Well, he's six not a question. Anyone he's six else? Yeah, six ten is a five on most NCAA know, teams. Yes, I, yes he's bigger. I remember didn't... that was the big thing I, I thought of last year when he played was that guy's bigger, not just taller, but bigger than I ever thought he was going to look. Especially yeah, next it, to maybe it's just I'm so used to seven three guys that we've had. Yeah, in the last yeah. five well, years. That <laughs> if you remember the few times that we went years. small ball, and one that or two two instances that come to mind are in our you know Thanksgiving tournament against Villanova and North Carolina. We were forced to play small ball in both of those games, and first did really well on both well. ends of the yes. court. Yeah, uh, he almost had like a backward trajectory for the season. He started off he like so well, and then he got hurt and didn't yeah. seem like he returned to that form. And, yeah, and maybe know, it's uh, just I'm so used to the seven foot plus guys that I think of first. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> we're 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 kind of the outliers in that sense, and that you know we have <laughs> we have the traditional centers, but yeah. Um, you know, I, I know Painter this time last year was 
praising first and was saying like he's the one guy that we can say for sure is going to start and that everyone else's starting jobs were up in the air and it's yeah. one thing i love about painter is his his candid nature and he last year his his biggest concern around this time was the team's defense and he was very vocal about that mm-hmm. and we saw i mean it was one of the worst defenses we've had uh under painter not the worst yeah. but one of the worst and this year, his biggest area of concern that he's been very candid about is the lack of experience um, in, in the backcourt. Um, he you know, has described Braden Smith as being our only true point guard. Um, we do have David Jenkins Jr. transferring in. And from what I understand about him, he's played point guard out of necessity, but he's more of a natural two. Um, and that Painter has praised Braden Smith uh, highly. Oh, yeah. said that he's a top 75 guy, and, and we, we will see by the end of the first month that he is a top 75 player. Yeah. And for him to say that is uh, pretty eyebrow raising uh, for me. Yeah. So I will um, say that the good thing with experience is that each game is more. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like like last year with defense, you you just like this team just sucks at defense you just have to work around it where a team that has lack lack of experience by february you've played 20 games like you have played a lot of games and luckily we play a lot of tough games you get into a lot of squirrely situations that prepare you for the end of big 10 and big 10 tournament and the ncaa tournament but i I think you know kind of my bold uh prediction for how the season's going to go is we're going to win. We're going to lose some games early that maybe we shouldn't. Um, you know, the Gavi games against Marquette has me a little nervous, but I think come January we'll be we'll be we'll be doing well. Um, you know, so um, kind of to touch on David Jenkins, uh, I think this is his fourth stop in college basketball. Started at North Dakota State or South Dakota State. Went to UNLV. Played last year at Utah, and now he's made his way to Purdue. So if Charlie Jones was our was we were his third stop, Jenkins being our being the fourth stop at Purdue, he should be even better, right? Like he yeah. should. Mm-hmm. Just... <laughs> mm-hmm. I but like that one, thought process. His biggest assets, obviously, going to be his experience. And I, and speaking of experience, I mean, we should also focus on what we're bringing back: our junior class uh, in you know in Newman, in Edie Gillis, and Morton. Uh, I think those those four guys will have an opportunity to really shine. Mm-hmm. Um, I expect a big leap forward from uh, Morton. I'm not 100% sure why. I just have a gut feeling that he's just going to take a big leap. And I, I know they that Painter talked about last year trying to get him to uh, to shoot more and to, to attack the basket more and that he's kind of embraced his role as being a role player almost too much. Um, so I expect that he'll kind of come out of his shell a little bit this season. Yeah, I um, you know, talking about that junior class again, I'm I'm really excited to see what Brandon Newman does. Not so much, I mean, on the court, obviously we want to see him produce, but what <laughs> he went through, just the the ups and the downs and the and, and the really downs that he, you know, experienced last year and to come through that in a world that is so like you're not happy here, you're not getting your playing time. Cool. Go somewhere else, go somewhere else, you know, fine. Find what's going to fit for you. Find what's going to where you're going to immediately start playing, where you're going to get that instant gratification. He just said, no, I'm going to stick it out and I'm going to I'm going to grind and I'm going to work my ass off. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to prove to everybody that I I can be the Brandon Newman that everybody thinks, you know, I can be and even better. Um, I think that is huge for leadership. Absolutely huge. He's going to be that guy that's probably making people stay over in the gym. He's going to be that guy that's encouraging everybody, pushing people to to work harder and to do more. And I, I'm so excited for him. I'm so I'm so pumped for Brandon Newman. I think this could be just a huge year for him mentally. Um, and hopefully that all produces and, and adds up and shows on the court. But, man, I think he's going to be such a huge leader and, voc- and, and vocal piece for, for this team this year. And I, I, uh, one thing I remember about last season was him, uh, a tweet surfacing of him, you know, shooting – threes in the gym after midnight in a game or after a game that he didn't log a single minute in, you know, and, and it's easy. It'd be easy to get your head down. It'd be easy to say like, Oh, woe is me or, or I'm transferring or, you know, screw this. But he, he didn't log a single minute in a game and three hours after the game, he's in the gym shooting threes. And, um, you know, to your, to your point, Damon, about, you know, transferring and, and whatnot, I, 
I think Painter is very fair and very straightforward with his players. Uh, in fact, some players have come forward and talked about you know how very straightforward and he is and how he doesn't lie. But I, I he does a good job of making a point in that if you're not happy with your production on the court, your lack of playing time, it's very unlikely that you're going to go get it somewhere else. That the problem probably lies with you, and we saw that with Matt Harms. I mean, Matt Harms was happy. He or wasn't happy. He wasn't getting enough playing time. He was con- possibly concerned about Edie. Uh, he went to BYU, and he averaged fewer minutes and fewer points than he did at Purdue. It, it's so I hopefully he instilled that in Newman, and, and I think I would like to think that Brandon Newman saw the fan base's support of him last year because you know in every single game you would just see the most wholesome like hey, we're cheering for you, you know, tweets. Um, because I think everyone knew what he was capable of uh, and, and, you know, wanted him to stay. But uh, he looked like a different player in that game against Penn State in the Big Ten tournament. I mean, he came in. That was crazy. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah, I was at that game. It was, it, was, it, was, it was one of the most surreal moments just to see yeah. him come off, to hear the crowd chanting his name. Yeah. I mean, he he came in. What did you do? Was, Didn't he drop like eleven or twelve points and he just did, yeah, was a yeah. demon on defense? And was a demon on defense. And I think I think that was the big thing. And that was the that was really the reason he was he was benched is because his defense was just not there. Um, and you know, with the exception of last season and you know, some players who shall remain nameless, you know, if you don't play defense, you don't play. Um, but <laughs> some players are good enough offensively; they can get away with that. So yeah. And average 17 points as a rookie in the NBA right now. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> name the names, but you know, if you want, if you truly want to know who we're talking about, you can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one, one thing also I thought was interesting from the scrimmage is that we, we played exclusively zone and that made me worried. Uh, but listening to Painter talk, that was um, purely for simulation purposes and getting the players used to playing against uh, a zone. So we're not playing zone uh, this season. Um, uh, just to allay any fears about that. Also, it seems uh, one of you know, the major takeaway from the scrimmage is that like Edie is going to be the means through which our offense flows. So he is going to uh, we're going to be looking to get the ball into him and kind of let him dictate what happens. If he gets double team, it's going to be an inside out game. Or if he goes one on one, ask Chris Beard how that worked out for him. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nerd. My um, I know we're gonna get more in depth next week on basketball as well, um, especially after the first painter show on Monday. But my brief thoughts oh, um, this week will be, you know, this will be one of the years I think where the leader, it has nothing to do with what year he is. You know, junior, sophomore, freshman. It's gonna be who's gonna step up and contribute and challenge the rest of the team to play to their level. You know, it's gonna be. It's not gonna be just an emotional leader. It's gonna have to be somebody that sets the example, you know, plays well on the court and then challenges people to meet his level of, of play and level of energy. And if it's Braden Smith, uh, you know, looking through some of the players that we've had here getting ready for this draft we're doing later, uh, I realized that we've never had a freshman of the year in the Big Ten in basketball ever. ever. So could, Bra- wow. could Braden Smith be that guy if, you know, I think the way it happens is if nobody scores great as a freshman because he's I don't think he's going to be the scorer. So if somebody comes in as a freshman and, and I haven't looked too in depth at the other teams and who's got big, you know, five star freshmen coming in, uh, we know how yeah, you will, but they won't do anything. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. anyways, um, so yeah, uh, but if there's nobody averaging 15 plus points as a freshman, if Braden averages six to nine points, but averages also six to nine assists, I think he could challenge for that kind of a title. So Well, and, and uh, not to get too, too ahead of ourselves here, but. Uh, I did hear a rumor about him leading Braden Smith, leading the walk-ons to a victory in, mm-hmm. in a scrimmage against the starters. There yes. Was. It went something like six An for overtime eight. victory at that overtime point. victory. Yes. So um, wow. again, that this kid is, is speculation. Real deal. Yeah. I'm so excited that Purdue finally has their Aaron craft. Like I, I know he's going to be his own person, but that's, I feel like a lot of what he uh, so, brings to the table. Uh, Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. You, well, I see his his personality. You. I see his personality as being the guy that everyone, every other team hates. Hates. Um, yeah. So for anyone who hasn't watched him play, go check out his high school yeah. highlights. He plays with fire. Like he plays yeah. with passion. He plays with he a chip on his shoulder. Bulldog. He he does. Yeah. He yep. he he, he like he likes to toot his own horn. He likes yep. to. 
He likes yeah. to throw it down and then get. And in that's something that we doors. haven't had in a in a point guard since Lewis Jackson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that's that's why I was shaking my head. No, Damon, it wasn't disagreeing with you. It's yeah. that I don't like Aaron Kraft. So that meets the I know. comparison. You know. So <laughs> I and I said this in our group chat, and I'll just poke it out here that because we don't have don't one single guy that's stop it the guy i think we can be more successful than we were last year because it's because one night it's braden smith going for 20 the next night it's Edie going for 30 then brandon newman and then caleb first and then this it's not one single guy that a team has to like hammer down on you know because with like with Ivy, for Edie. Well, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Like, generally speaking, like, you know, if Ivy's having a bad night last year, we're in a pretty bad spot. Yeah. Where this yeah, year, well, I think we, I think we have the more, more uh, spread offensive capability, but we still have that like hockey line change lineup. Yeah, I, 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 I can certainly see that as, as a, as a possibility, and I think you know Painter said it several times and i think it's going to come down to the backcourt and the the experience there but um from what it sounds like braden smith is our starting point guard um you know it hasn't been officially said but uh with the amount of praise he's gotten and his ability to shoot and handle the ball and see the floor um you know i think we're gonna see uh see some big things from him but um i think this is a great time to go ahead and initiate our uh draft for the evening all right, uh, so I'm, pull up the I'm not go. good at this stuff, so I'm gonna sear it up. Let's go. So uh, this is uh, this is Russ's idea. So if you want to go yeah. ahead and explain the rules to yeah. everyone listening, because I certainly yeah. don't know. Yeah. So I thought it'd be a good idea just as some positivity, and it, it worked out too. That's right after the Wisconsin game for football, uh, but just to go through uh, recent memory, uh, I, I picked 1990 on because that's kind of our age group on. So it's players that we've seen play because it's really, really hard to compare different eras, especially when you didn't actually watch that era in person. Right. You're just looking at the stats and there's no YouTube highlights on Rick Mount or Joe Barry Carroll. I mean, you can find some grainy footage, sure, but I want it to be a passionate debate and a passionate, you know, uh, picks by us. So I want it to be players that we've seen not just on TV, but in person in games uh, at times or grew up watching, you know, because obviously the Katy area is kind of what we grew up with, those 90s yep. guys. And then we got to start going to the games and have a lot of memories of the Painter era. And mm -hmm. as much as we uh, expect some disappointment in March, we've also had a lot of talented, talented guys, on not just the Big Ten level, but the national level. So I think this will be a good way to kind of get people pumped up for the basketball season. So what we're going to do is – Damon's got a draft um, or a uh, order randomizer. And so we're going to draft snake style. So it's going to start, you know, with if Damon's the first pick, he'll be the last pick in the second round. So it'll be whoever picks fourth will have two picks in a row and then it'll kind of go back through. And we can't pick the same player twice, of course. So once a guy gets picked, he's off the board. And there's no real parameters to you have to have two guards, two forwards, and a center, just like painter has been and, and katie at times too it's fluid you can do three guards two forwards whatever you want your lineup to be if you think you can win with isaac Haas as your point guard go right ahead but um yeah, yeah it's it's just kind of how you want to build Won't your team you and threaten me with a good time <laughs> yeah I'm, my starting lineup's going to be isaac Haas, caleb swan again zach ed <laughs> aj hammonds and uh and matt uh, harms yeah, yeah matt harms eating grant yeah. there you go there yeah, can. Okay. So, uh, Damon, Damon tell, go tell us how we're picking. Yeah, spin the yeah. wheel. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's see here. All right. And I promise, if it picks me, I didn't. It picks. Hey, I actually got the first pick. You I promise. Right. I can't wait to see you mess up the first pick. It'll be great. I'm actually really excited. I got the first pick because uh, I was really nervous they'd be. Um, taken in the first round, but I'm going with the cold blooded killer. I'm going with Carson Edwards. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't okay. pass on Carson Edwards. I, you know, I definitely think he, if he doesn't get taken this round, he would have gotten taken the next round. So, um, all right, let me, let's go to the next one. All right. We've got not who I would have thought be the one on one, but, uh, okay. While you're doing that, uh, I'll just talk about Carson a little bit. He was seventh all-time in points at Purdue, third uh, third most in a single season with 874 um, in his highest season, and that was behind just Rick Mount 
and the big dog, Glenn Robinson. So, um, yeah, yeah, he was a big time scorer for us. Yeah, he was hot and cold, but uh, when he was on, he could not be stopped. Uh, And Russ, you are the second pick in the draft. Well, then I'm glad I accidentally said my pick, my 101, is the big dog. I don't know how you can't pick the one guy that has won the National Player of the Year. Um, He's got the most points in a single season in Purdue history with 1,030 points. He's the only Boilermaker with over 1,000 points in a single season. In 94, he was the NCAA scoring leader. Um, He was the Big Ten Player of the Year and Athlete of the Year across all sports. Consensus first-team All-American. He was one of only 26 players in NCAA history to win all six of the National Major Player of the Year awards. So, yeah, big dog. Put him on my squad. I just couldn't get past on Carson. I was just afraid he'd go in the first round, and so I, I just couldn't. He's just so cold-blooded. I just love Carson. But uh, let me uh, – okay. All right, third pick here. Oh, I'm going to have to remove – hold on. Let me remove Russ and I so that we're not – I'll take another pick. That's fine with me. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and that's – I mean, you brought up a good point, Damon. It's This is going to highlight, I think, just how many great players we've had. There's not really wrong answers. We'll rib each other and we'll have debates, but – Chris, you are the third pick. Dang it. (laughs) I don't know. This one's tough. Um, I'm going to go Caleb Swanigan. Okay. Okay. Great Um, pick. Great pick. I think R. that R. like he just just his presence and his versatility because he could he could slam guys from the outside, you know, that 18 foot in, but he was still physical enough to 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 bang around inside. I just I just like his all around game. I mean, he was a 40 percent three point shooter, 30 yeah. percent defensive rebound percentage like his rebounding yeah. alone, you know, was he holds Maybe. the Purdue single season record in rebounds for 36. That's crazy. So, yeah. Man, I, I still wish he'd have stayed one more year. Yeah. yeah. He was 2016 freshman of the year in the Big Ten. Or, no, it wasn't freshman of the year, Big Ten. He was all freshman first team, but he was a top 10 freshman nationally. Um, first team Big Ten in 2017. Big Ten player of the year in 2017. That's what it was. Yep. And then first team All American and won the Pete Newell and Lou Olson Awards. Um, yep. for big men in college basketball. And I don't think you mentioned it when you were talking about uh, Carson, but didn't Carson win the, the Jerry West Point Guard of the Year award? He did. Yes. He did. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 So does that does that leave me next? Then? Yeah, yep. you're the next yep. two back picks. Back-to-back picks. You okay, back-to-back. Picks, back. So, yeah, um, I'm nervous now. Oh, God, let me look at my is, draft board here. <laughs> this is one that – He didn't uh, even make a board. I'm just winging it. This is this is one that maybe, maybe is going to be a little unexpected here. Um, but I'm going to go I'm going to go with P.J. Thompson. Um, Ooh. Yeah, okay. Wow. Uh, hey. So when 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 looking at yeah, when looking at every player uh since 2010 his plus minus is he he's it's uh, ranked 17th in overall plus minus. Um and, and so my strategy uh, spoiler alert it's going to be more about chemistry um because you can't you you, you can't have five, you know, all-Americans on the same team. It's just not going to be a well-functioning team. So six to one assist to turnover ratio, um, above average defender was always clutch when it came to hitting a three. Like oh, always yeah. in the right place, played as hard as true. Single yep. time. Um, so I think that you know, age. I love that Louisville game. Oh God, yeah. I mean, the the the, the one I remember is Wisconsin. They went down the wire and he hit three in a row. Like they were just yeah. like, we're gonna leave you open. He's like, oh, okay, let's see okay. how that works. Cool, bro. So, was it the uh, Villanova game that he hit the big? Three right before halftime. Yeah, at halftime. Yeah, time, yeah, got right, right at halftime. Yeah. 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 Nearly uh, yeah. nearly crumbled Mackey to rubble. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was I was there for that one. That was yeah. that was elite. So um yeah, got got gotta go with PJ. Um he's one of my favorite point guards, just you know, not not the most elite scorer, but did everything else right. And you know, Painter always says you, you can you can you can contribute uh without uh scoring points and he kind of epitomizes mm-hmm. that. Not, not, not that he can't score points, uh, but he just that wasn't the he wasn't the main thing he was doing when he was on the court. Well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, my number two, uh, who also is a two on the floor, got to go with Etwan. Um, yep, yeah, he's damn. number two on my board. So I mean, Etwan is yeah. one of the most versatile players we've had, especially under Painter. Uh, I mean, he was a three level scorer. He's a thirty nine percent three point shooter. Uh, 73% free throw shooter, 
was effective field goal percentage, 50.8. Really, really, really uh, uh, respectful there. But the uh, thing that stands out the most is his assist percentage of 20.2. That's better than a lot of point guards we've had. So just the kind of do-it-all guy uh, from a guard perspective. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, him being kind of the go-to guy on my fantasy team, which I think every good team needs a guy that can go out and get their own bucket, whether that's a mid-range or taking it to the rim or a three uh, or drawing fouls. Uh, he, he's kind of a do-it-all player. So, uh, yeah, going with Etwan Moore, number two. Yeah, um, like you said, I like you brought up he was a two-way player. He, um, mm-hmm. Of course, he's known for his scoring. He was third all-time in Purdue history behind only Rick Mount and Joe Barry Carroll. So if the guys in the era were drafting, uh, he was a leading scorer. But he yeah. also was sixth in school history in steals. So he didn't yeah. just yeah. play offense; he played defense. He, you know, he put yeah. he put his uh, effort in on both en- both ends of the court for sure. Well, and he has fifty nine blocks in his career too. Uh, That's crazy. Which is, yeah, mm-hmm. which is uh, uh, almost as many as Vince Edwards had. Um, yeah. So that's just yeah, impressive, impressive for sure. Am I next? But, yeah, that's back to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm going to go with Robbie Hummel. Son Dang of it. No, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to fall to me. I God. really thought he was going to fall to me. I was like, you're going to give me Glenn and Robbie. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and Russ, th- because- thanks, thanks for having all this info ready to go, too. That's, yes. That's, that's yes, really good stuff. Hey, I was excited about this segment. It's kind of a big Yeah, this, is actually, so, this yeah. has actually been really fun. I think, uh, okay. I think for Robbie, honestly, I mean, he's the player that I feel like most fours and threes are 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 stereotyped around when it comes to Matt Painter, you know, Vince Edwards yeah. was compared to Robbie Hummel, you know, other threes and fours are compared to Robbie. And, and he's just kind of, I don't want to say the flag bearer for the Purdue era under Matt Painter, but he kind of is between him, Juwan Johnson and Etwan Moore. Like, I mean, they were the, they were the, the revival baby. of the Purdue program. Yeah. He was um, the only player that I saw where I was looking up stats that was the only player in the school history in the top 10 in points, blocks, steals, and rebounds. Yeah. So yeah, he, he did everything. Now he played for like eight years, 10 years, whatever. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, he did everything. He had a doctorate sure. before it was done. You know, what's funny is um, uh, with it being around Halloween. Now I saw a Facebook memory from like 12 years ago where I went as Robbie Hummel for Halloween. And I, <laughs> I was wearing a Purdue basketball Jersey and I was walking around with crutches. <laughs> Oh, I love that's messed it. up. Oh, my God. He's got to be the only player in Big Ten history. <laughs> I couldn't look this up. There was a three-time Big Ten first teamer in separated years, right? So it was 08, 2010, 2012. So <laughs> I don't I don't know that any player's ever done that in history to have years between all three of his first well, You'd have to be right? a sixth year player to be able to even do that, right? Yeah, or at least fifth year. Yeah. If you did it freshman and then you know was your fifth yeah. year senior and did yeah. it like your sophomore or junior year. Yeah. One one thing that really sticks out about him too, um, and it's an often overlooked facet of his game, his turnover percentage eight point two percent, which is the lowest of any player that I pulled, and I pulled every player from two thousand nine onward. So that's impressive. Great. Yeah, one hundred thirty eight turnovers in his right. very Russ. long career. Yeah. Russ, go ahead and break my heart. Take my take my pick. Well, I don't know if I'm going to take your pick. Um, cause I'm going to play a little bit of the, uh, the draft game and hope a guy comes back to me since you already took Carson. Um, and you're not going to pick two guys that I think wouldn't mesh well. So I'm going to go backcourt, um, or front court. I'm sorry. Frank's going backcourt. He's got his, um, his guys in the backcourt with PJ and Etwan. So I'm going to start filling out my front court and put JJ in there with Glenn Robinson. So, you know, we'll see if he's going to be the five. Or the four. Oh, yes. Got him. Oh. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Juwan Johnson <laughs> took the um, last baby kind of, boiler from you. you know, yeah, I feel like you know each one was known as the prolific score of the baby boilers, and Robbie was the guy that never left and did everything. And some kind sometimes Juwan Johnson's a little bit overlooked. Oh, so Juwan he was, was eighth all time in points in school history, tenth uh, highest single season mark with six ninety eight in uh, two thousand ten two thousand eleven. Uh, in twenty eleven, he was the first team All American, uh, Big Ten Player of the Year. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and he was a three-time All Big Ten Big Defensive Ten Player team. of the Year. Yeah, not just Player of the Year, yeah. Defensive Player of the Year as well in the same right. year. Um, and then two-time <laughs> First Team All Big Ten, um, and then also a Second Team All Big Ten honor as well. So yeah, I'm gonna take Juwan Johnson. <laughs> there you go, Damon. Figure it out, bud. Mm. Man.
Man, that really sucks. Okay. Um... <laughs> this is the best part. If if you play fantasy football too, this is the best part of drafting is when you take Man, the guy, snipe like, him. Oh, yeah. You just see the soul leave his body. When you said I wouldn't pick a guy, uh, a guy that wouldn't mesh well, I thought you were going to go with uh, somebody else. I thought you were going to go with Jaden Ivey. That's because – He's on the board, but I don't think him and Carson would mesh well at the guards. That's that's the game I'm playing since you said it. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. you'd take him, so I thought I can wait and see if he makes it back to me here. But maybe you're just going to try to get me back here. Let's see. Man. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, – you know what? He'd be a good – I don't want to leave him on the – I mean – Tilton early. It's only your second pick, Damon. Come, Come on. on, brother. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to go with Zach E.D. I'm going to go with Zach okay. E.D. at my center. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, he uh, – the second most efficient player in college basketball last year. Out of all the players I pulled, he has the highest plus minus above Robbie, above yeah. Etwan, above Juwan Johnson. Um, so, yeah, I mean, definitely a solid pick. 24.8 offensive rebound or defensive rebounding percentage. Um, you know, and he, he, his free throw shooting ability dropped from about 75 to 68, but he attempted almost twice as many. Um, so I think we're just, you know, seeing the average approach, what he's capable of, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a solid pick there. Really solid pick. I would have taken him next if, if you had. And, so. and Damon's banking on taking a current guy to get the current votes. You know, he's, he's yeah, still on the yeah, team. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Get one more, sir. Oh, sweet. God, I forgot about okay, that's a little bit nicer. Um, let's see. I got my center, I've got my starting point guard. Uh um, while he's thinking too, I'll remind you all that we're gonna post this on Twitter so you can vote on who you think uh, has the best squad, um, who can take it down if they all played in this hypothetical world we're creating. Let's see here. You know, I'm gonna go with uh, Vince Edwards at three. Okay, solid choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on my list for sure. So I had on him. He was ninth in school history in rebounds with 779. He started right out of the gate his freshman year. He was um, getting some starts in. He was Big Ten Freshman of the Week three times in his freshman year. 2017, he was third team All Big Ten. 2018, he was second team All Big Ten. Uh, the biggest thing I remember about him was the Vince versus Vincent. You know, what guy are you going to yeah. get? Yeah. <laughs> um, he definitely had games where he disappeared, but he had games where he's the reason we won. <laughs> so, yeah, his, uh, his his versatility on the court is something that um, I really don't think we've seen since uh, to, 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 to that level. Uh, one guy I think you could argue maybe uh, is on that same level as Gillis, uh, still kind of TBD. But he was a he was a jack of all trades for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. So my pick's pretty easy now. I played the game and it worked out. So I'm going to go Jaden Ivy. Um, start getting my backcourt put together. He was a 2021 uh, Big Ten All Freshman Team, 2022 First Team All Big Ten, uh, Second Team All American, and his 26 points his freshman year against North Texas was the most by a true freshman in his NCAA tourney debut. So that. Uh, that was pretty huge to have him break out the end of his freshman year. And then obviously we know what he did last year. Didn't have the outcome we wanted, uh, but he's also getting us some notoriety, doing well with the Pistons starting off there. Top six pick. I think he was the number six pick to Detroit. So yes. even though he was a shorter career, uh, I think that to, it'd be hard to press to find a better athlete that's ever come through Purdue. Just the freakish athletic ability that he had to get up above the rim, his hustle, his speed. Um you know, had some issues maybe on the defensive end, but um, also just seemed to make yeah, some huge, huge, big three-point shots for us. So um, I'm going to take that guy that uh, if, you know, Glenn's getting doubled down in the post, uh, he can kick it out to Jaden and hit that open three. I love Jaden Ivey, but I'll never forget the game against Rutger at home where he was driving down the court, um, just ran straight into the Rutgers defender and thought that a foul should have been called. So he just stood there and looked at the ref like this while Rutgers just took it down and scored an easy layup. I'll never forget that. I love Jaden, but I'll never forget that. I was yeah, like, I was so mad. Also, also love Jaden, but that was a that was a one game occurrence. I felt like 
as him. Yeah, yeah. it used to drive me crazy just when he wanted to call and he just where you're like, and stare well. at the ref instead of continuing to play the game. Yeah, yeah. but he was good enough on the offensive end that he could he could make make up for it for sure. Right. My turn. Yes, sir. All right. Time for my lockdown defender. Oh, I don't do it. Chris don't you do it. Kramer. Ah. Okay. Uh, great. Yeah. Great, how's it feel, great. Russ? How's it feel? Does it burn? <laughs> well, Does it wasn't it right before my pick like yours. So uh, it's not as bad. But uh, yeah, yeah, it burns. It burns. Don't worry. Yeah. Chris Kramer, uh, two time, two time yeah. Big Ten Defensive Player of the yep. Year. Two time, three time All Big Ten Defensive Team like Juwan Johnson. Uh, 2008, he was third team All Big Ten. Um, and he led, he was first player in 16 years to lead the Big Ten in steals two years in a row. Yep. So since, you know, you're talking about since like early 90s, I guess, uh, he was the first player to lead the conference and, in steals two years in a row. So uh, he holds four of the 10 highest single season marks in steals in school history. And uh, and my yeah, but, biggest thing, you want to know the, the, the game or the moment that sold me on Chris Kramer? Michigan. It, IU. Taking the elbow. Oh, okay. the yep. Mm-hmm. I was like, that dude would go to war wearing a Purdue jersey. Like, that just sold me. I was done. And uh, you want to talk about kind of our Cal Ripken guy? Um, one of the yeah. guys that just was a longevity guy. You know, even Robbie was there for as long as he was. Um, he was second all time in school history in games played with 133, uh, third in starts with 114, and fourth in minutes played with 3,704 minutes. Wow. So the dude did not quit. <laughs> no. I love everything about that dude. I I just, I've always, he was like, and I say player I'm obsessed with, but like the, like the super fan of one player, like everybody was a huge fan of like Robbie and Juwan and each one. But like Kramer, I feel like embodied that Purdue he mentality. Was, yeah. He was defense yeah. lives here. Like that was Chris yeah, Kramer. Yeah. That sign that's in the student section is because of Chris Kramer. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I'll I'll keep so Frank's the... got uh, PJ Thompson and Etwan Moore, Etwan and Moore. he's got back to back picks here. I uh, mm-hmm. I'll keep the uh, lockdown defender theme going. Um, Great. I've had had my eye on a guy since my last pick, and uh, you know when Chris said defender, I thought he was going to take him away from me. And this is a guy who played the two, the three, and the four at times Brady, for I us. Think. Rayfield Davis. <laughs> wow. Rayfield Davis. Ooh, yeah. okay. Another another we're trying guy. to get his podcast listeners to vote for you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, another <laughs> another guy who who uh, you know can 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 attack the basket. Um, wasn't a great three point shooter throughout his entire career, but really the last two years he kind of took off um, from mm-hmm. from behind the arc and and his his ability to just neutralize the other team's best defender was was like it just. So hard to counteract, and a game that comes to mind is 2016 against Michigan State. It's on YouTube for anyone who hasn't seen it. Go watch the first 10 minutes of it. 2016 against Michigan State at home. Watch nothing but Rayfield Davis. He blew up that entire sort of Chicago action. They were trying to run with Bryn Forbes. You could tell he'd watched his film. Bryn Forbes had a terrible night. That was an interesting tactic by Painter, by the way, to put him on their second leading scorer, not their leading scorer. Neither here nor there. A guy who can attack the basket, great free throw shooter, clutch guy, um, has the insane athleticism and can neutralize the other team's best player. So uh, I feel like my uh, pick has been justified. So Yeah, yeah, I like <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. I, like I love that game. Yeah, there's, against Michigan. there's no wrong pick. So we'll rib each yeah. other and we steal each other's right. guys. But, you know, there's no, that, no <laughs> wrong picks. That was uh that 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 was the best game I've ever seen at Mackey. Still, yeah. Uh, to this I day. remember watching. Do you remember that clip that they made where they did like the audio yeah. in the stadium, and then yeah. they did he, like the he, audio. He hit five threes in a row. Yeah, and that that fifth three. That's that was the loudest Mackey moment I've ever experienced. Like yeah, from my incredible. perception. Yeah. So uh, I know I've kind of built my team from from the bottom up with respect to positions, but uh, may just have to jump straight to a five here and um you know, i'm picking picking guys who played together but i'm gonna have to go with aj hammonds um oh, again I'm, I'm just gonna stick with the chemistry list. and and the defense aspect but um you know especially toward the end of his career he he was <laughs> pretty dominant in the post 
Um, you know, when you look at his block percentage of 11.2, this is the uh, best under Painter, uh, only second to Matt Harms, 343 career blocks. Um, what Which doesn't go on the stat sheet is how many shots he altered. Uh, but I really just felt like his senior year, I mean, he was dropping 20 consistently. And, um, you know, he even his junior and senior year, he was able to show that he could step out uh, and hit the three. His his motor was kind of questioned sometimes in, in, in his drive. But, uh, you know, if I'm going to go purely with uh, for chemistry here, I like the, the lineup of P.J. Etwan, Rayfield Davis, A.J. Hammonds. I'm a, for one thing, this is going to be an elite defensive team for sure. So did you say he was second to Matt Harms? Uh, block percentage, yeah. Second oh, block to, percentage, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah, not he's not, not, not total blocks. Yeah, yeah. He's also second in total blocks behind Joe Barry Carroll. He had three hundred forty three blocks. Um, he was another player that was a three time All Big Ten defensive player or defensive team. Um, twenty sixteen, he was the Big Ten defensive player of the year, and uh, was first team All Big Ten in twenty sixteen. Uh, was second in 2015. And my big memory from him is the year, I think it was the year we were last in the Big Ten, possibly. Um, Cody Zeller was at IU. Um, they had some other players there. but And we lost one year, one of those games. To, it was like 90 to 60, I think it was. But, but A.J. On. Hammonds, he had 30 and 20. He had 30 yeah. points, 20 rebounds against Zeller, who was supposed to be this lottery pick, big man. He could shut you down defensively and score on you. And he literally shut Zeller down and then shoved 30 points. <laughs> down so... Yeah, he. Um, I remember taking an elevator with him when I was a student that that same year, and just being so enthralled, or like just like surprised at how big he was. But yeah, elite elite player. It's unfortunate he didn't have an NBA career. I really thought he would, but um, yeah. So um, as that does that bring us uh, that brings us back to Chris. All right, I have fought back and forth on this pick. But I think I'm going to do it because my man likes beer. Ryan Klein. Yeah. Yep. Great pick. Klein. Okay. He's really good I just pick. think, like, you just got to have that shooter at the, at the shooting guard, and I will give him his fly fishing form. But okay. I just. So that gives you, just to recap, you got Kramer at the one, Klein at the two, mm -hmm. and then Robbie and Caleb Swanigan yep. as your big. Yeah, it gives you like a three or a four or five opening. You can kind of move them yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. um, I've always liked Klein. Like I was, so I was struggling between Klein and Sasha, um, and I, I, I had to push off some, some recency bias a little bit with Sasha, um, but just look at their numbers. Uh, Klein's a little bit better shooter from three, and ultimately that's the reason I picked that pick Klein over Sasha was because he's like like uh Klein's at 40.7 from 3 and Sasha's at 38.8. I mean, you're splitting hairs, but I'll take an extra shot or two every couple games. Yeah. Sasha has that X factor too. That just Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great pick. So um I guess that moves it back to me. So um <laughs> That's interesting. So I've got a few places I'm thinking about going here. And just out of curiosity, am, uh, am I the <coughs> oldest one in the group? I was born in 89. I was born in 88. Because uh, I just noticed that we've all picked painter players except for one um, uh, Katie era player when I took the big dog. And I think I'm going to go a second Katie era player here. And this I is kind of a is. my guy. This is kind of a my guy. I, uh, you pick who I've, I think you're going to pick. I've literally – I've yeah. literally been described as this guy when I play open gym or I'm no, playing you are basketball. Not. <laughs> You're not the gender. I, just, I loved watching him. Um, I loved one of my favorite comments about him was when he was on the Mavericks, I think, 06 NBA finals team. Dick. And um, Jimmy Kimmel said, my favorite player on the team <laughs> is this guy because he looks like the janitor literally suited up and ran out onto the, the court and started playing basketball. And it's, it's Brian Cardinal, man. I mean, Brian Cardinal – He's another one of those guys. If if Robbie Hummel is like the quintessential Purdue guy of the Painter yeah. era, I feel like Brian Cardinal is one of those guys for the Katie area. Katie mm -hmm. era. Um, you know, he was uh, second all time in school history in steals and tenth in rebounds. Uh, started every game of his freshman year, so he came in playing from the very beginning, um, every minute, every game that he could play. Uh, but he literally was a a passionate guy. He, I, one of the memories I have of him was. 
the Elite Eight loss to Wisconsin when he was literally crying for KD because he wanted to get him to a Final Four so, so bad. But, um, yeah, Brian Carnell is going to be – I guess I'll put him my four and put Juwan Johnson, have him play five. Um, and I think he'll work well with this squad. I like it. I like it. Um, but I don't like it as much as my pick. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was hoping for another reaction, but uh, I guess I didn't get it from you. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with uh, the old Midwestern Cowboy at shooting guard. I'm going with Dakota mm-hmm. Mathias. Um I have, oh, I love man. Dakota. Uh, I think he's a great shooter, um, and I think him and um, the the chemistry with him and Vince, and then I think Carson as well. I think that would all just translate really well in that. So I'm going to take Dakota Mathias <laughs> at shooting guard. Yeah, that's a great pick. He was, he was a guy. He was a great guy too. I got to eat breakfast with him uh, as a season ticket holder event, so we got to eat breakfast one player at every table and. Yeah, super nice guy, super down to earth. Um, and he he even made a joke about playing in the NBA as if like, you know, haha, isn't that funny? Me playing in the NBA and then I mean, he's <laughs> kind of playing in the NBA. So good for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All righty, let's see. So I got I have the uh, next pick again, right? Is that correct? And this, you're the first one to fill out your squads. You got yeah, you're about you got Dakota right? Mathias, uh, Carson Edwards, Vince Edwards. You got the Edwards brothers. Kind of, not really. Brothers, the law but, firm. Yeah, the law yeah. firm. And then Zach Eady at your five. So you got yeah. kind of a three or a four, kind of a wing guy opening. Yeah, yeah. so um, let's see here. Honestly, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think I'm going to go with Caleb first at the four. Nice. Okay. Nice. Go modern, right modern era team. Okay. Okay. I like it. There's, it's interesting. As I look at the list of players, there's one – player who i feel like should have gone by now um but we'll we'll see how much longer that takes interesting so um i'm not sure if it's the player i'm going to take because looking at my squad i've got Jaden at the two big dog i'm going to play him at the three brian cardinal at the four juan johnson at the five so i i need a point guard i need somebody that's going to going to tie this team together um that's going to uh, give it a little leadership maybe, um, but be able to distribute. Doesn't need to score necessarily as much. So uh, I'm going to go with somebody we talked about, uh, Lou Jack. Yep. Lou Jackson. I, I knew exactly uh, where you were going with that. <laughs> seventh all-time in assists. <laughs> uh, force 56 in Purdue history. Um, played with the Baby Boilers. Was kind of a glue on that team and was able to distribute with those big names and those big scores. So I think he'd fit in really well with this team. Uh, was also on the 2009 All Freshman Team, so playing amongst the younger guys and the Baby Boilers. He also he had a great team as a young guy too, coming in as a freshman. So also his 29 uh, percent assist percentage, 456 career assists. I mean, you can't ask for more than that in a point guard. Nope. Great choice. Yep. So uh, I think I've just got center left, right? The five. Yeah. I'm going to go, and this is just strictly just because I love how big of a human he is. Um, Purdue's Dolph Lundgren and Isaac Okay, Ives. Yeah, that's really? the guy. That's the guy that I was surprised hadn't gone yet. Uh, See, yep. that's 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 not the guy. There's a guy that I, I thought should have gone over him as center, but we'll talk yeah. about it. I, I just talk about some omissions. for me, I just I like how, how, how just how big he is. I feel like he did a really good job. Like, sure, he got beat up. Every game, we all know the fouls that never got called, whatever. But I feel like he just he's just big and imposing, and he was kind of just that guy next to my team plays your team, we're going after his elbow. I'm just saying. I mean that's fine. Yeah, he's he's the reason for the hook and hold, right? I mean, he's pretty much the reason that they made that a um a flagrant foul in the NCAA. Yep. So yeah, that's my five. Uh Kramer, Klein, Robbie. Swanigan and Haas. Okay. That's a that's a stellar squad right there. <coughs> well, thank you. Well, that uh that that leads me to wrap things up, right? Yes, sir. Yep. You've got PJ, oh, yeah. Etwan, Rafael, and AJ. So I'm gonna go with uh, a guy who who played some four um, early on in his career. Uh, kind of finished out as as, mm-hmm. as a five, but definitely played. <laughs> who is it, Russ? Uh, I think I know, but I'm not. I'm gonna let you say. I don't uh, want to spoil you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I gotta. I, I gotta go with uh, Trevion. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised, I'm surprised, surprised he didn't get picked sooner, to be honest. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm surprised he he made it this long. Uh, and and yeah. honestly, it was it was a toss up. It's really a toss up between him, Grady Eifert, and Mason Gillis. Yeah. Uh, at, at really. Yeah. So, a uh, quick question for you guys: Did any of y'all consider any KD era players? Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, I just yeah, like Keenan uh, Grant. I thought about yeah. him a lot. I thought so, about um, David. No, uh, no and, 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 and I'm, I'm sorry, Ralph, the one yeah, I forgot yeah. was Carl Landry. It was also between yep. him as Landry. well. But, Carl yeah. Landry was yeah. on my list, but Brad Miller's the center I thought would go yeah. over um, even Travion or Isaac Haas. Um, yeah, I mean, know. so Travion is uh, under all, all players under Painter. He's number five in uh, <laughs> overall plus minus. Um, he's got some pretty, he's again, an elite rebounder. There's going to be no shortage of rebounding on this team between, uh, you know, Trevion and AJ, uh, yeah, you but, get all the rebounds, bro. But I, I just, I just envisioned this amazing two man game between him and AJ Hammonds that, yeah. uh, would, would be really, that's kind really of why cool. I got between Swanigan and Haas. I feel like kind of, the same I mean, way. yeah, they, they, they did play together. I think yeah. both years. Right. So uh, um, a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, all right. Brad me, Miller was uh, – um, I just want to go over some omissions real quick here. Uh, yeah. Brad Miller was tied sixth in school history with 862 rebounds, seventh in school history with 163 blocks, ninth in school history with 145 steals. And fun fact, his junior year, he's the only center in Purdue history to lead the team in assists. Jeez. So, and, you know, obviously he had a, a pretty decent and long uh, NBA career, was a two-time All-Star. I remember his – first all-star season he was actually with the pacers and so mm -hmm. i had a lot of fun watching him play with the pacers um another guy that i think could have could have been picked if you're picking katie or katie era guys is uh kwanzo martin um he's probably oh, one of the best yeah. pure shooters to play for purdue uh he was a career uh 45 three-point shooter which that led Jeez. i couldn't find a current stat, but it led the school history when he graduated and he was uh fourth in school history with 179 made three-pointers um, and he was a big part of that squad with Glenn Robinson as well that had those successful uh, early, mid-90 years. Uh, and let's see, Matt Waddell as well, if you're going old school again, sixth in school history with assists, and shout out to, you know, the son that's say, now playing as well. Real so, old school because his kid's currently on the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if you looked up, so I, I just had some fun. I looked up uh, Matt Waddell to see if I could find highlights, and there's a – uh, clip on YouTube. If you YouTube 1994, number nine Purdue at number three Michigan, that was when they had the Fab Five. Um, we were down eight with 227 left, and Waddell hit two big threes back to back possessions. And then Robinson, I think, had the last five points, and we outscored them 11 to two in the last 227 to nice. come back and beat them at Michigan. Um, nice. So that's a cool little clip if you want to look that up. Um, I think that's I'll the that out. emissions that I had. So, and, and then Carl Andrew, horrible. we mentioned him. An honorable mention for me, a guy I almost picked as my point guard, uh, was John Octius, mm -hmm. just oh, because yeah. I love the way oh, yeah. he played. Nothing really jumps out, uh, you know, in terms of his stats. He was just a solid, reliable player, incredibly athletic, you know, average defender, average average scorer. Um, but man, he he will forever be remembered for putting Colin yeah. Hartman on a poster. I was gonna say he's the only Purdue um, basketball player I've ever heard of baptizing thousands of people all at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> baptizing, the, baptizing masses. the masses. Baptizing yeah. the masses. And so, I yes, and I will be honest, I feel like that Akis dunk was like a program changing dunk. I feel like we just went like nuclear after that dunk. Like, I don't know. It just it was cool. Well, and I, I remember watching it was might have been a press conference or something or you know a, a golden black interview, but he said all season he had heard if you want to be remembered, do something against IU. So he, yeah. he made it he made it a point to do that. And also after that Michigan State game that I talked about with uh, Ray Phil Davis, as I was leaving, I ran into John Octius, talked to him for about five minutes. Um, that was the first year, you know, his first year not being on Purdue's team and an extremely nice guy. Um, it was really easy to talk to. So that also um, – I just feel like I'd be remiss to not mention him uh, in this exercise. All right, so, so I'm getting um, ready to uh, post the. Actually, this is I can talk to you guys about this after we uh, go off the air. Okay. So yeah, I was going to run down the squads real quick. Uh, not a particular order, considering where they were drafted. But Damon had uh, Dakota Mathias, Carson Edwards, Caleb <coughs> first, Vince Edwards, and <coughs> I drafted uh, Lou Jack, Lewis Jackson, Jaden Ivy, Big Dog Glenn Robinson, Brian Cardinal, and Joshua Johnson. 
and Chris nope. and Chris Kramer, Ryan Klein, Robbie Hummel, Caleb Swanigan, and Isaac Haas. Yes, sir. And Frank, PJ Thompson, Etwan Moore, Raphael Davis, Trevon Williams, and AJ Hammonds at the center. You know, I I find your picks very interesting, Frank, because it's like it's that it's a lot of the guys that you drafted are are that group of guys that were like post baby boilers, but also before Vince, Dakota, and Haas all showed up as well, which were kind of those years uh where other than Trevion, struggled. yeah. Yeah, we're other than Trevion where we struggled a little bit. So I I, I think that's really not interesting in like a bad way at all. Just very interesting because I I don't think that people tend to think from that era or like you think of that era, you know, of Purdue basketball too fondly. Um, well, so and I, what what that era missed, in my opinion, was a guy like Etwan, a guy like Jaden yeah. Ivy, yeah, uh, a guy like Carson, a guy that you know could go out and get his the own cut shot. Guy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, um, you know, the closest I'd thing they that. have was Dakota, who was a fantastic player. Um, but uh, yeah, I think. You know that group with each one, you know, because you 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 got to respect each one's ability to score at all three levels. I think that's a, I I I, I think it's a pretty elite squad. And and you know, after hearing yeah. some of your alls, it's probably the best uh, if I had to guess. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Oh. All right. Did we did we wrap? Did we uh say everybody's squad? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, I fun. think Thanks, we Trent. are on the wrap up here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, late, um, late wrap up. Yes, that's our... all right though. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. We'll definitely no, have to do this for. That was a lot of fun. Maybe uh, you know, maybe we'll pick like the like uh, maybe we'll do it for days. for football. Like we'll do like a uh, just like all the... twenty two positions. No, yeah, no, just... I've got some ideas. I got some yeah. ideas. You know, yeah, doing cool. like I'll be here yeah. till you know, do like a quarterback, Good running Lord. back, and a couple of receiving options. Yeah. Or yeah, and um, just I maybe like, like a... a Mount Mount Rushmore Purdue sports. I thought about yeah. drafting. Yeah, we could do like Purdue traditions, like Purdue this game day, like or just Russ is bailiwick. So we're yeah. just gonna put that in his court. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it was a really cool idea. I like it, and I'm you know yeah. we'll do it again in the future. So I appreciate that idea, Russ. It was really good. Uh, yeah, it, was it was a lot of fun. So. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for all tuning in. Uh, if you're still watching now, I appreciate it because we're about 22 ish minutes over what we usually do, but it was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully you guys played along as well. If you're watching, you know, maybe you guys have a totally different squad that we didn't draft or, um, you know, players that, uh, you know, uh, you would have put on instead. You know, I can think yeah. of like, uh, Kendall Stevens was in the back of my mind as like a, um, you know, a guy that I'd, I'd bring off the, the bench for sure. But anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk Iowa, to talk a little bit more about Purdue basketball, and uh, we'll see you then. Boiler up, yep. hammer down. Boiler up.